just because it was the seventh day. He scolds bystanders who want to fuss about the valuable ointment that is lavished on his feet. For him, it is not about the value of that ointment or the money that could have been raised by selling that ointment for something else. It is about an act of utter love and devotion. He speaks to a Samaritan woman in the middle of the day and he offers her forgiveness and a new beginning. He casts out demons and he becomes known for letting people who are ritually unclean touch him and for touching the ritually unclean. And he goes to have dinner with Zacchaeus, the tax collector, and embraces him with forgiveness too. In his teaching and his actions time and again, Jesus is upending these written laws and these unspoken social norms of the day and living in this place that is marked by mercy and compassion and grace and redirection. And then we have Paul speaking to the church in Corinth. And he's correcting misbehaviors that have really upset this community. Corinth is a bustling town that has lots of wealth and lots of affluence. And in his letters, he's navigating these divisions between the haves and the have-nots. And those who think that they know it all because they've been doing this Jesus thing for a long time. And those who are brand new to the faith. And those who boast a loyalty to Paul. And those who have begun listening to other teachers who claim to have a truth. He challenges the idea of what is wise and what is foolish. He challenges the notion of human power in light of what God is doing and what God's power looks like. He reminds people that they belong to Christ, not to the powers of the world. In some ways, like Jesus, Paul is hitting a reset button on what people think that they already know so well. Paul and Jesus are jogging memory. They're clarifying what matters most, and they are simplifying what the world has made complicated to that point. You've heard it said, but I say. If you think that you're wise in this age, you should become fools, so that you may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. <sighs> what worldly foolishness? has our attention right now. <laughs> and how might finding and keeping that beginner's mind actually help us reorient ourselves to the love of God and neighbor? The beginner's mind is watchful. It's curious. It's aware. The beginner's mind wonders. The beginner's mind is stripped away of all of the baggage of our past experience. The beginner's mind watches what Jesus did, what Jesus does, what Jesus is doing. So I want to take us back for just a moment to that question that my dear friend posed, which was, does the Jesus that sat on the end of my bed still exist today? For just a moment, I want you to hold in your heart all that you feel is broken in this world. And that seems like a heavy burden right now. All of the us and them that we hear in the news and in our schools and in our workplaces and in our own United Methodist denomination... Hold those things, and then pick one issue. Maybe it's homelessness. Maybe it's immigration. Maybe it's health care or climate change or bullying or hunger or gun violence or addiction. Pick one issue and feel all that rises up in you as you think about that one thing. Now, if you're comfortable, I want to invite you to close your eyes, which is a risk in a sermon to invite people to close their eyes. <laughs> I want to invite you to close your eyes if you're comfortable and to take a few deep breaths and to try to see that one issue in a new way with 
fresh eyes with wonder, with tender hearts. And now, what if you invite Jesus to sit beside you? To look at what you're seeing and feeling right there with you. Maybe even holding your hand. Sit with the expectation that as Jesus sits beside you, he will have something to say to you. Hear, feel, know what Jesus wants you to know about this one thing, how Jesus wants you to act, to respond, to love in light of this one thing that's going on. invite us back to this space. For some of us, that might have been really difficult. For others, maybe this is something that you've done before, or maybe it's something you do all the time. If it was hard, it's okay. We call these things, we call things like prayer and Sabbath and fasting and study, we call them spiritual practices. We call them that because we actually have to practice them. It doesn't come to us naturally. It's something we actually have to try out and try again and do and immerse ourselves in. We have to practice. So what if we practiced seeing anew? What if our practice of seeing anew actually involved inviting God directly into seeing with us? Into responding with us? into exploring our response. By teaching and by example, Jesus time and again corrected the understanding of those around him, hitting a reset button on what they thought they knew and understood about the way things worked. When we practice seeing anew, we practice awe and wonder and hope. And we get to escape some of our past experiences, and we get to see the world in new ways. And when we see the new world in new ways, we find ways for us to be light in dark places. We see places where we can actually be expressions of hope. This week, as I sat with this idea of a beginner's mind kind of turning over in my head again and again, um, my husband walked a very hard path with a family at the hospital. And he does this. I mean, it's what he does. Um, but this little girl, Malka, had this wisdom that was truly a gift of God. And she had expressed this amazing a sense of God's presence with her all along. She fought a seven-year-long battle, and she lost that battle on Wednesday. But in seven years, the hospital staff had come to know her and had come to see how she interacted with her family and with God. And when she died on Wednesday, it was just two weeks after she had written and recorded a beautiful song about the journey that she had been on with Hashem the name by which she called to God. So I want to close our time today with words from Malka's love song to God because they are words that express a beginner's mind as it waited on God. And even though I'm not that strong, please help me find where I belong. Hashem, please help me fly and soar through the sky 
I want to know what everything is about in your world. Sometimes it's dark, but I know you're by my side. So I'm not scared at all. Amen. This is our time as a church family to share joys and concerns uh, with one another, to celebrate something great or to ask for uh, support and care for ourselves or for others. Um, as uh, I call on you, if you raise your hand, uh, I invite you to say your name if you can and uh, let us know who you are. Even just your first name is fine. Uh, and if you have a long list, <laughs> if, if you can stop in between requests, because my brain is kind of small, and, um, <laughs> and it would help it very much if you can pause so that I can repeat it so folks who might not have heard uh, can, can hear. What would you share today? I want to lift up our brothers and sisters in Northern Virginia who, uh, a United Methodist congregation that runs a hypothermia shelter in Northern Virginia. Um, there was an ice raid immediately across the street from that church this week as people left the hypothermia shelter at 6.30 in the morning to go on about their day. Um, clearly, it is upsetting to the people who were held, it is upsetting to the community that watched it happen and creates great questions about the risks they take in serving. And so if we would hold them in prayer. Okay, so uh, we would want to keep um, that church and uh, the people all around uh, uh, in our prayers as well as um, keep our hearts open to ways that we as uh, people of faith can respond um, in the midst of all of this. Others? I, I, oh, okay. Thank you so much for this week. This church is going through a lot. Mm -hmm. We are so thankful for the people who are here and who are struggling in their own way. Mm, okay. So if you don't know, uh, Little Flowers is the preschool that we have a, a, a relationship with. Um, and they have an amazing ministry that goes just be well beyond uh, small children up to big ones. Um, and we have been a part of that through Sue. We want to keep in prayer uh, Crystal Flowers, who's be, go be going through a biopsy this week. So keep her much in your prayers. Um, I'd also like, while I'm thinking about it, uh, for us to keep in prayer uh, uh, Janet Davies and family. Um, her, uh, Janet's brother, uh, passed away this past week um, in Sierra Leone. So we want to keep them very much in our prayers. Um, others? Okay, so, um, uh, yeah, it is a tough bar exam, I'm sure it is. Um, uh, so Meredith asked for prayers for her, her friend who has taken the, the bar exam. Yeah, okay, and that joy uh, of being together. Others? I would like also for us to remember uh, Kathy Garland. Um, uh, she went through ankle replacement surgery this week. So we want to keep her in prayers in her um, process. Anyone else? Then uh, let's take a moment to go to God in prayer silently, and I will close us.
gracious, loving God, give us fresh eyes, fresh ears, perhaps the eyes and ears and heart of a child to not assume, to be open, maybe to questions, maybe to seeing you at work in ways we never expected. Maybe to seeing your face or hearing your voice in the needs or care of another. We offer the prayers that have been spoken out loud and those that are silently on our hearts today and pray that you might move where there is need, comfort where there is hurt, and help us to strip out of the way our assumptions and to open up to your presence, to your love, and to being a reminder in this world that you have not left us, but are here offering love. For we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. We have a few announcements today. Um, we want to thank the many people who volunteer each week to make our wor worship services happen. These are today's volunteers, and we give thanks uh, for them and, uh, and want you also to know how many people it takes to make things go around here. And here are next week's volunteers. So if you're on that list, it's a reminder. Uh, and also, if there are things that you would be interested in doing, uh, let us know and we will plug you in. Uh, starting today, we moved our service to 1045, so we give thanks for that. So if you got here early, um, good. That's all <laughs> fine. Um, but uh, we wanted to give uh, both the praise band a, a little bit. They've really, they really have to hustle to get things set up and ready to go. Um, and so uh, give them more time and also give parking a little chance to, to switch over in between services. Little Flowers Tutoring uh, in Baltimore will be on Saturday, February 25th, and you can catch a ride from here. You don't need to be a rocket scientist um, to help tutor. You just need to be willing to help and have a good heart and smile. Um, uh, the Nicaraguan mission trip in January 2018. There is an information meetup for that next Sunday at 10.15 downstairs in room three. So if you are interested, you don't have to be committing. If you are interested in just checking it out uh, and seeing what uh, the ways uh, that God might work through that and through you, um, we invite you to come to uh, room three downstairs at 1015. Uh, also that Sunday, uh, I will be running an EUMC 101, um, which is a basic orientation of this church. Um, we touch a little bit about Methodism. We talk about uh, uh, membership, but you're not, you're not obligated to join. It's an opportunity to meet a few folks who are new to the community at Emmanuel and also some folks who have been around for a little while. So if you're interested in that, if you could please let me know. It starts at 1030 um, next Sunday and it will be uh, at the, the building at the back of uh, the parking lot, um, which is the ministry center. So um, uh, let me know and there's child care uh, uh, available on request. Um, our family game night is also next Sunday, February 26th from 4 to 6, and that, that means that it's the church family that is invited. So whatever your family is like, it could be just you, it could be zillions of you, you are invited to come and be uh, a part of that um, and have a great time, bring games uh, if you have something specific you want to play. Um, it's just kind of a fun time together. 
Also, uh, next week we will have Shrove Tuesday on February 28th um, from 5.30 to 7.30. That's right at the, the Tuesday before Lent starts. And we eat pancakes, as many as we possibly can. Um, Gluten-free uh, uh, pancakes are available, for which I am very happy. And uh, they do call it Fat Tuesday for a reason. So... Um, after that, the, the Wednesday after that, which is the first day of March, is the Blues Ash Wednesday service with me, with Brian, and other folks who will be here. Um, my friend Eleanor Ellen Ellis, who's a, a well-known local musician, um, is going to be a part of that as well. So uh, come join us. It's not a concert, but there will be lots of music in the worship service, and it will be a time that you can reflect and begin Lent, um, we hope, in a, a good way. Uh, looking ahead to the Lenten season, you should have in your uh, announcements a little brochure about uh, the Lenten uh, study. So Sunday evenings, you see the dates there. Um, we will be gathering for a simple meal and then uh, for different workshops. There are lots of different workshops that the general theme is self-care. Um, you can look at all the different ones there. Um, I would like to highlight two for you. One is uh, the simple cooking that um, Donna Mioli and I are going to be doing. Uh, and, and, and I hope people who have been around my cooking aren't frightened by that. But, um, uh, but the, the first Sunday will be about gluten-free uh, cooking uh, that other people like to eat, really. So... Um, so we'll probably, we'll be making some, some gluten-free chocolate chip cookies that are really good. And we'll be uh, doing some uh, gluten-free cheese rolls that are really good. So uh, that's just something we're going to try. And if you're uh, in, like many of us, finding more and more people in your circle who are gluten-free, it makes it uh, possible to do some simple things that won't, um, uh, that other people will want to eat. So you're not fixing two different meals. Um, the next week is uh, allergy uh, sensitivity, so we're going to talk about different allergies and concerns that people have about food and a simple way to do that, uh, a simple meal. The third week will be Bill and Bev DeBono um, with a simple but wonderful, most likely, because they are amazing cooks, um, uh, meal preparation. So I hope you'll come and be a part of that. The other one I'd like to tell you about is the... Um, is the simple self-care practice for body and mind, and that is will be run by Judy LaPrade, who is uh, has taught many places self-care workshops of a variety of kinds. She is really, really well educated in different things uh, about how to relax body, mind, move away from some different kind of negative habits and move into some positive ones. And she's a delight. She's funny. And she's really very sensitive to the different things that people might be dealing with. So you might also want to come and be a part of that. That's just the first Sunday. Um, if you are going to join us, it's really helpful to fill out the brochure so that and, and to register ahead of time so we know how many people to prepare food for and uh, what our crowd will be. So we hope you, you'll join us. Um, last but la not least for announcements, I'd like to invite... Um, Elizabeth, I have your name, uh, yes, Elizabeth Sebastio, and we are very happy to have her. She comes from uh, M Meals on Wheels uh, of Maryland. Hi, everybody. I'm Elizabeth from Meals on Wheels of Central Maryland, and I wanted to come here today um, to just educate everybody about what we do. Um, we're serving all of Maryland, and uh, we're just doing some outreach to... Um, get some more people on service because we have some additional funding to assist. So thank you for the great um, teachings today and having me here. Um, so God teaches us to love one another and we do that at Meals on Wheels by being there for our families and friends in the community. And we serve two meals a day to anyone who um, has a difficulty getting out of the house or um, difficulty preparing meals. So that's anyone of any age or um, income. We um, generally serve a lot of older adults, but we also serve uh, people as young as in their 20s or 30s uh, because they might have a disability or maybe had a car accident or a surgery 
Uh, maybe they have cancer and are getting treatments, and that really wears them out, so we're just preparing meals for them to make sure that they can get that proper nutrition and have a friendly face see them a couple times a week um, or as often as they need. We also have some other programs that make us a little bit different than um, some other Meals on Wheels throughout the nation. We have a volunteer grocery shopping program and a kibble connection program, which is um, to deliver uh, dog and cat food to our clients because that's their best friend and they need food too. Um, we also have a phone pal and companions program to help with reducing isolation in our clients who maybe don't have a lot of family or friends nearby. And we've also had some really cute love connections happen that way, too. Um, so if you know anybody in your community or um, within this congregation who might benefit from meals, whether for a short-term or a long-term need, we're here to help. And I'll be in the lobby just um, with some information, and I have some applications. So if you want to take one to somebody that you know or for yourself, um, I'd be happy to talk and um, give you some more information.